Charles. Okay. Well, I'm very glad to be able to have Lee Hartwell back from Elder Services to the nutrition program. And Lee plans our menus for our, our, uh, our congregate meal site, our lunch program, as well as our Meals on Wheels. And she also had Lee come out and talk with us about nutrition information. It's always been a lot of fun. And because today we were, you know, this week we were doing the health education week, we thought maybe we just would have ask Lee to come back with a little bit more. You know, and she's, she's brought some samples, and so I guess you can see some recipes and information. So thank you. You're welcome. Yes, really yeah. appreciate it. No problem. Sure. And yeah, thank Perfect. you for having me. Thank we're just glad to have you. Good. Have that opportunity. So welcome, everybody. <laughs> so my name's Lee Harwell, and I'm from Elder Services. I know I've seen some of you before lectures but today I brought some information on because winter is coming although it doesn't really feel like it it's coming felt like it yesterday though, right? it did yeah. feel like yeah. it yesterday so I have a whole bunch of handouts up here and information on boosting your immunity for winter with nutrition and also inflammation and diet so inflammation is something that is in our bodies and can cause illness it's related to arthritis related to a lot of different things that our bodies inflame for more susceptible to different types of illnesses and disease. So the information is kind of similar through these three things. And the third one is talking a little bit about nutrition and memory and also information on the MIND diet. So has anybody ever heard about the MIND diet? No. M-I-N-D? No. So it's, it's kind of more new research. Um, so has anybody ever heard of the Mediterranean diet? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so what is the Mediterranean diet about? Anybody know? It's mostly your uh, vegetables, meats, olive oil, uh, olive oil, oh, well, nuts, yeah, good and oil, and oil, oil, vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. The good fats, yeah. the green leafy yeah. vegetables, yeah. nuts, yeah. seeds, not so much red meat. Yeah. It also includes um, one glass of wine. People really like oh, that part yeah. about it. <laughs> 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 That's just one. So one glass, so not not a glass this big. <laughs> um, so the the Mediterranean diet, you're right. It's more about healthy fats, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, not a lot of processed foods. Um, and then the the Dash diet. Has everybody anybody ever heard of the Dash diet? So the Dash diet is a dietary. It's to prevent blood low bar, I mean, sorry, to prevent high blood pressure. So it's dietary interventions to help low blood pressure, to lower blood pressure. So what they did for the MIND diet is they combined the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet with the DASH diet and they got this MIND diet. And so some of this information I got is from the Alzheimer's website because this is the diet that they recommend now for helping to boost brain power and also for memory. So it involves, much like the Mediterranean diet, it's a little bit different, but green leafy vegetables, nuts, berries, beans, whole grains, fish, poultry, olive oil, and wine. And then we want to cut back, because those are the things that we want to eat more of, and the things that we want to eat less of would be red meat, butter and margarine, pastries and sweets, and fried or fast foods. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty obvious information, but some of the more specific interventions or specific foods that are good are listed on this sheet. Um, we have eggs, we have avocados, that really healthy fat salmon, that good fish, and all of those things. So the omega-3s that you see in the salmon and the omega-3s that you see in the olive oils and the walnuts are also good for our immunity and our inflammation. So we eat for our brain, but it's going to keep our immunity up and it's also going to lower the inflammation in our bodies. Um, so the foods that are linked to Alzheimer's they found the most of were processed food. So does anybody can, can tell me what a processed food would be? Canned foods. Yes, it depends on what the canned food is. Because if it's just carrots and you know no salt and in water, it's pro I mean all food is processed. Process is really kind of a funny word because I think about you know something like this, which is just dried chickpeas, but yet it comes in a package, so is this process? So I always find that word really kind of confusing on what process is. I tend to think of process is if you pick up a box and you look at the ingredients list and there's 20 
15 ingredients and you have no idea what those ingredients are, I think the more ingredients, the more food is processed. Right. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, so this was saying that foods linked with Alzheimer's and it lists processed foods and it says especially cheeses, which is interesting. American cheese, mozzarella, laughing cow, cheese whiz, which is, is that really even a food? <laughs> uh, beer is on the problem list, so put away that beer, drink the wine. White foods, so we hear a lot about white foods, you know, white pasta, white breads, those things are linked to Alzheimer's as well. And microwave popcorn is a big one. Um, and that's because it has a certain chemical in it, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it, but, but diacetyl, D-I-A-C-E-T-Y-L, that is also found in candy, baked goods, and margarine, and that has been shown to increase Alzheimer's disease. So, interesting, some interesting information on this. Um, and then as far as immunity, can anybody, can anybody give me some ideas of what foods or vitamins might be good for building up your immunity? So the omega-3 is are good for inflammation um, and, and for your memory, but for immunity, not so much. Um, it's more about, well, I, I, I want to take that back because protein is really important for building immunity and fish is a type of protein. So if I were to say the number one thing for seniors to keep their nutrition up and to stay healthy would be protein. Protein is very, very important for a lot of different functions in our bodies. Um, and protein is found in Things like chicken, fish, nuts, seeds, eggs, yep, all of those things. So has anybody ever heard of probiotics or good bacteria? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Doesn't there like different thoughts on that? There are a lot of different thoughts on that, there are. And um, so I tend to say that probiotics are good and prebiotics are good. Prebiotics feed the probiotics. Probiotics are the bacteria and the prebiotics are the food that feeds the bacteria. So we need to make sure we have both of them in our diet. They're good when they come from food sources. When they come from pills, like everything, it's not regulated by the FDA and you have no idea what you're getting. So it's always good and I always push getting things from food sources rather than from pills. That's a really good question. Does anybody, I heard one person say something. So where would you get good bacteria? Yogurt. Yogurt, yeah. Yogurt's a really good example. Um, Stonyfield Farms is the best yogurt. Also things that are fermented foods like kimchi, miso, sauerkraut, pickles, as long as they're not fermented in vinegar. That kills all of our probiotics. I know, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so, so I, I, there are some of these things written down on the handouts. But buying things in pill form, you just never know. Probiotics are living creatures, so putting them in a pill, I don't know how effective that is. Mm -hmm. Can you say the yogurt? Yep. All right, I, I'm lactose. Okay. So, and they do have, uh, Yoplait has one that is, you know, lactose free. Would that change the, uh, the yogurt? So it really depends on the bacteria. You have to look over and you have to read on the back and it says contains bacteria and it will list all the different strains of bacteria that it has in it. And that's good? So the bacteria is good, yes. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> So a personal story, and I don't know if this is, is, is valuable, it's a, it's a one person representation, but I have a three year old daughter and she drinks something called kombucha every morning. Kombucha is a fermented beverage and it has a lot of probiotics in it. Her whole class got the stomach bug and she was the only one who didn't get it. So I don't know if that's why, but I like to think that it helps build up our immunity and keep her strong. Those little things that we can do every day, you know, just having a glass of kombucha, just having a container of yogurt that has a lot of those listed bacteria can really help our immunity. What's kombucha? What's kombucha? That's a really good question. Has anybody ever heard of kombucha? No? So 
So kombucha is a, it's a beverage, it's a fermented beverage, and it's basically a fungus and tea mixed together, and then you get this kind of bubbly, vinegary tasting beverage. And I'm not describing it, it tastes good. <laughs> but the fermentation process causes the bacteria to grow. And so um, it tastes, it tastes kind of, it depends on what flavor you get, but it tastes um, almost like a sparkling juice but it tastes a little bit vinegary, depending on some of the flavors, but not a really strong vinegary flavor. So, but it's a good, it's a beneficial bacteria. It would be the same if, you know, you ate a cup of yogurt a day or a half a cup of yogurt. But you really have to read those labels, it's important. So someone mentioned vitamin C. Um, vitamin C in foods, where would we find that? Oranges, yeah, or citrus fruits. It's really important for that, strawberries, kiwis, potatoes, if you eat the skin, are also good sources of vitamin C. And vitamin A is also important. Anybody know where we find vitamin A? So vitamin A is in mostly orange and yellow fruits and vegetables. So cantaloupe, sweet potatoes, carrots. Vitamin A is good for immunity, also good for our eyes. I'm sure people have heard that before. How do you feel about the airborne? Do you know the airborne? Yeah. Because when we don't travel, One is nuts, 
and I know a lot of people can't eat nuts because of teeth issues. And the other is beans. So I brought two snacks up here. This is one of my favorite snacks. It's dried chickpeas. So have people heard of chickpeas or garbanzo beans? It's another name for them. The ingredients in here are chickpeas, sunflower seed, and salt. That's it. And they have a little bit of crunch. We'll pass them out so you can taste them. Pretty low in sodium. They have protein. They have fat, which is a healthy fat. So this is a really good source of protein, of antioxidants for a snack. And then one of my favorite snacks is called a Larabar. So has anybody ever seen these on the shelves? So, Scott, <laughs> Scott, throw all my snacks everywhere. So where do I buy these? That's a really good question. Both of these are bought at Stop and Shop. Um, I've seen them at Market Basket. I've seen them at Whole Foods. I've seen, I've seen uh, the Lara Bars in Cosby's. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure Cosby's have them. They have a lot of good stuff. I'm pretty sure they have. You are all chickpeas. Yeah, these are just roasted in the oven. That's it, they're just roasted in the oven. These would be a little bit harder to make, but not that hard. Let me read you the ingredients. Ready? Cashews and dates. That's it. Two ingredients. You get a bar, you put this in your purse or your pocket. You're hungry, here's your snack. Cashews and dates. That is it. And in here we have our protein, we have our healthy fats, it's a nut, but it's not hard to chew for seniors because it comes in a bar form that looks like this. Really easy to break, it's not hard, soft, it's good. The only thing is we wanna brush our teeth so at some point because the dates can be a little sticky and cause cavities over time. So these are two of my favorite snacks that I thought I'd share with all of you to maybe get away from your potato chips and Oreos. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> and these have about 200 calories a bar, 220, five grams of protein, five milligrams of sodium, um, 15 grams of sugars, but it's all natural sugars because this comes from dates. So these are examples of whole foods that can be looked at as processed foods, but in my mind, they're more whole foods. So, any questions on any of this information? Don't have enough protein, we start to lose muscle mass. 
and we lose muscle mass, we can fall. And when we fall, sometimes it can be detrimental to our health. So what do you feed your kids? What do I feed my kids? I have one kid that will eat anything you put in front of him, who loves all foods, and I have another kid, my daughter, who probably only eats yogurt and fruit and <laughs> cheese. Um, very rarely she'll eat a little bit of meat, things like that. Um, so I, I, I try to just constantly give them healthy options. You know, I'm always putting it on their plate, giving it, try to limit our processed foods. I've been trying to eat a little bit more vegetarian with my children um, rather than meat all the time. So, it, it, you know, we just, they eat what I eat, and, and if they don't like it, then we try to find substitutes that are healthy. But trying not, you know, not a lot of mac and cheese and hot dogs more. <laughs> Even, you know, my son, I'll have a plate, and I'll give him hummus and vegetables and olives and cheese, and that'll be his dinner. You know, something like that. So not necessarily a whole meal, but things they can pick up and play with and eat and enjoy that way. But then he goes to school and he comes home and he says, I want, you know, fruit oh, yeah. snacks in Millage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or fruit, Mom. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly, Mom. Hummus is chickpeas, right? Hummus yeah. is chickpeas. Yeah. So yeah. hummus is ground chickpeas. Yeah. Made, made from the same thing as peas. Yeah. So oh, perfect. Good. So maybe you can pick up, take some of these tips. Yes. Yes. So oh, I love peanut it. butter on toast. So peanut butter is great. I love peanut butter. I think it's wonderful. The problem with peanut butter is when people buy peanut butter, they buy it and they buy it with sugar in it, with hydrogenated oils in it, with salt in it. So most of the peanut butter that's in the store has a lot of other things and peanuts in it. So when you buy peanut butter, you want to turn over, you want to read the ingredients just like I did with these. And your ingredients should say peanuts and maybe a little bit of salt, but nothing else. And those reduced fat peanut butters are worse for you than the regular peanut butter. Eat the regular. And as far as toast, if as long as you're eating like a whole wheat or a whole grain toast, it's a good choice. So definitely. What'd you say? 100% grain English butter. Yeah, the 100% whole wheat. Um, so I shop at Whole Foods sometimes. I live in Andover. And they have a machine, it's like this big, it's filled with peanuts. You take your container, you go under it, you press a button, and you have peanut butter. And that's really the best way to eat peanut butter. Teddy makes a good natural yeah. peanut butter, too. I like ice cream peanut butter. Ice cream peanut butter, ice cream peanut butter. Oh, yes. Yes, It's hard because we do crave the sweet things in our diet. And we do want to give into our cravings because if we suppress our cravings, they only get stronger and worse. And then all of a sudden we'll say, ah, oh, I want more my ice cream. And you might eat a whole box of ice cream versus a little bit. So a little bit of, you know, taking those sweet things a little bit rather than suppressing it and going crazy and thinking about it. Any other questions? What do, what do people think about the snacks? Aren't they delicious? They're so good. Um, so for a, a quarter of a cup, which there's five of those in this container, 130 calories, four grams of fat, all healthy fat, 160 milligrams of sodium, six grams of fiber, which is huge, and six grams of protein, which is great. So, and they don't go bad. You know, you can keep them in your cabinet for months and they're fine. So it's a... These are called chickpea snacks. This is B I E N A Vienna. Maybe they have all different flavors. I just grabbed these because they were the most baseline. They have sweet, salty, spicy. And did anybody try these? Yeah. Not yet. These are also good too. I've made these. I'll put you know, roast them on a baking sheet with olive oil and salt. And do you buy the canned chickpeas or do you yeah. soak them? Yeah. Do they like this? Yes. Yeah, that's good. One. One. It's always one. There's yeah. always one that she, if she and your daughter, the two of them would be put together. <laughs> and the other two are too early, I thought. I mean, basically, like pasta, she's yogurt, <coughs> cucumbers, and avocado. Hmm. <laughs> 
bigger out of it. You can't stress about kids and nutrition. You just keep trying. And they'll, if you need to supplement with any kind of, like I gave my daughter a little iron.
the house, you're not going to eat it, right? So if you ask me, how can I stop eating ice cream? I'm going to tell you, don't buy it. <laughs> because my, my, my husband's like that. We buy If I buy something, it's some sort of treat, it's gone like that. You know, the whole package instantly gone. Um, so we just don't buy it. Or we buy it and we hide it. <laughs>